guys, it's Sakuams. Welcome back to my channel. So if you know here, hello, my name is Emily and I'm a French artist and YouTuber and I make art videos about paintings, watercolors, I do work with markers, I also do tutorials and a lot of those things and I also give you a few tips and tricks with your art so you can also maybe improve and try it out. In this week's video, I am going to work on this very large acrylic painting that you can see. This is a portrait of an Asian girl that I did for Fred. So I worked on this painting, it took a long time and I really fell in love back with acrylic paints because I was wondering if I could um, adapt my style to working with paints and still all, have all my colors and really just do a multi-dimensional character and it turns out that it works also with acrylic paints so uh, yeah I'm really excited I hope you will enjoy the video I will walk you through the time lapse and give you 10 tips for your own acrylic paints so I'm going to talk about the tools I've used explain to you how I work with acrylics and also the brief story behind that piece so I used um, a 40 by 50 centimeter cotton canvas and mostly student gray like quality paint, not like high hand, just the quality below that. I do also use the Amsterdam um, acrylics, like the basic ones, and I also bought some white, a Naples yellow from their Expert series, like the Expert range, because they're more versatile and pigmented and also more opaque. I worked with acrylics before when I was in fine art school and also when I was in graphic design high school and I always found it really interesting to work with but not pigmented enough. And I also didn't like that it was drying way too fast. I just learned with time that you can actually extend that drying, the drying time with like uh, mediums but it's better to simply work in layers and not overly blend. I'm not the best painter yet, I do have a lot to learn yet with the tool, but I found a lot of help in the videos of Lisa from the channel Lacrifine Art, so I highly recommend you also check her acrylics tutorials because I've learned a lot. With that said, I think I can give my own tips and advices from all the years of practice, and overall I do think that those tips also can apply to most tools. So. You'll see me working right now on the face and the shading took a while on the skin. Um, I just learned to basically not care too much about the blending and um, it's more of an illusion of shading like I wanted to say. When you work with markers, for example, if you're familiar with markers, you know that they are meant to, like, they are very meant to blend together and you don't, I mean you also lay colors on top of each other but it's an easier blend because they're translucent with the paints because acrylics are opaque and um, even if you dilute them it is harder to blend because you have to come on top and almost do an optical effect and, and create uh, the colors in between and then do a smoother finish and I I give up on a smooth blend. I mean, it, I know it's possible, but I give up on that <laughs> when I was painting the skin because I just couldn't really get it to blend really well. And I just decided to work from uh, a larger range of colors and then I gradually went from there. And I also think that the painting itself isn't meant to be like really seen as a, like close to it. You have to have some sort of um, distance from the painting and you see an overall color com like combo so it's not very like okay this is not ex like really really blended very well everywhere but it still works because of the the finish itself and I just um, gradually shaded everything um, I waited for it to dry then I came back on it so um, the painting is a portrait of an Asian woman and I went like a very abstract kind of painting with like flowers and I was targeting specifically to do red roses because it's a gift for a friend of mine to put in her living room and the walls like the wallpaper is red so that was also why I picked um, like really dark hair and the red roses and then I did like this little abstract kind of way of, of putting the flowers. I didn't want to have a portrait cut out to like the the arms so I I kind of cut it out in the shoulders and I I don't know I mean I didn't really thought the concept art 
that well. <laughs> it was pretty basic, but I had a lot of fun working on the skin and incorporating colors. I um, uh, use a lot of this bluish turquoise tint that I put as a secondary light and also um, I've used it for highlights on the hair and on the skin. That's basically it for the actual painting itself and the process. Uh, you'll just see during the video all the details. I've recorded a lot of the skin and also the background shading and then I uh, recorded the details on the hair because that was the longest part. And I also, I don't know if you can see that in the video itself, but I used a technique to tint the hair and I will talk about it in the tips. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the actual story about the painting. Now I want to get into giving you a few tips for your own practice if you do work with acrylics. So the first tip uh, that I think I should give you is it's very important to plan your colors beforehand. I have a color scheme, an idea of the ambience that you will that that you want to have. I also do that with like uh, copic marker artwork. It's it really helps to pick colors and then you also have more time to work on the shading itself because acrylics really dry are drying quite fast. If you know the colors before you actually paint, uh, you will just save some, some time. And also mixing colors is really time consuming. So if you do have already the idea that you'll need like some sort of purple flesh colors and a bit of um, like a lighter yellowy shade, whatever, you can al already just think ahead and have it set up and prepare your color and then you also can work and actually spend the time on the shading itself. So the second tip that I want to um, to mention is also about colors. It's very important, I think myself, to buy a larger set of colors. You don't need like gigantic tube of all the colors. Um, I think the basic one that you should probably have in a larger container are a nice opaque white and maybe like a flesh color and like the primaries, you know, yellow, get it like a nice cyan color and maybe also premix red because red is kind of hard to get. Get your basic and then uh, get more, maybe like smaller tubes of premixed colors and hues that is um, that are hard to blend and hard to mix from scratch. For example, any of the flesh colors, it's actually really hard to um, to blend and to mix them from basic tones. You'll need like a magenta, yellow, you'll need also white, you may also need some of the, a bit of blue to desaturate the color. And then once you are happy with the shade you created, you're going to be really, really upset because it's hard to replicate the exact shade. So I do think that one of the best way to save you time and also paint in it's just to own a set of like 20-ish colors that you know you'll use. So let's get on again with the tips. Um, the third one I would like to mention is to work in layers. I always thought that acrylics were very tedious because coverage uh, is hard to get even with like opaque paints. And so I was just painting over and over again on the layers without actually waiting for them to dry and to build the opacity. Some shades are opaque and some shades are transparent. So you have to know really which is which and uh, do a, a like do an underpainting to place the basic shadows. Then you can place your first coat of paint, like an opaque color, let it dry, and then you can start your shading. So it's like watercolors. You have to be patient and just build the opacity. It's important also, as my next tip, to paint over the entire canvas, even the whites. The whites on a painting, they don't stay white. They are painted white. This is infuriating for me. Um, it's just better to have a full-on coat of paint on your canvas because it gets in all the little crevices and it really coats the texture um, of the canvas itself. And yeah, it just has a more cohesive blend in the end. Another tip for you is to remember that it's very important that acrylic paint dries darker than it is. When you prepare your colors, always make it a tad lighter 
then they should be in the end. That means keeping an eye on the brightness of your shades and when you layer them, always keep in mind that you are painting with a shade that will get slightly darker. It's hard to know if your shading overall is soft enough, it may look harsh because the colors are too different. So remember to do like a patch test on a scrap piece of paper so you know exactly how the color will dry. Another tip that I can give you is to use different brushes for texture. You need one like for details, some with like an angle, flat, overall shape. You can also use like fan brushes, you can also use a sponge. And I personally, for the painting itself, I've used two kinds of brushes, a round, like two sizes of round brush for my shading and a mop brush that I've used to soften the shading itself and also for the tint of the hair that I used. Um, I basically used a dry technique so I have a little bit of my um, paint on the brush and I stretch the color as much as I can so that means I'm using every single part, <laughs> every single um, color that I have left on the brush until it's completely smudged out on the painting. You can actually use acrylics like watercolors. You just use more water or like a medium and you dilute the paint, then you work the texture with the transparency and then you can build up the layers from that and build the opacity that, like you will do with watercolors. Also, uh, number eight for the tips, I think it's also very interesting to use acrylics as a base before working with the oils. This is shown in details on Lacrifina channel. You basically do your underpainting and basic shading only with the black and white paint, like working in grayscale. And once it's dry, you switch to oils and you glaze the colors. So I can't really show you that in this video, but I'm definitely going to try the technique itself. And yeah, if you would like to find out more about this specific technique, I will highly recommend you check it out on Lacry Fine Art channel. So number nine, uh, I think it's also quite interesting if you are kind of new to paint, especially to try different texture. You don't have to work on a canvas, you can use MDF boards or papers. There's different kinds that are made for uh, acrylic paints itself. There's some canvas texture paper. There's also very smooth finish paper. So you can have totally different results. And it also depends on the topic you want to paint. It's a portrait or landscape. And you may find it more convenient for you to use a smoother texture. So feel free to try it out. However, if you do use a smoother finish on like as a paper or canvases, it's really hard sometimes to blend and to do a really smooth blend. It's a little bit harder. So if you're new to paint or a beginner, I will still recommend you take like a fine grain type of canvas. It will be better. Then the last tip that I wanted to give is to varnish your piece. Even studies and smaller paintings, it really gives an amazing finish to the paints and pops up the contrast and the saturation, really makes a difference and of course it protects your work. I prefer a matte or a semi-gloss finish because it's closer to the actual gloss of the paints, but feel free to use also a glossy varnish. I actually used a glossy finish varnish in a spray can for this specific painting and I prefer that because I have a thinner layer than if I was using it with a brush and even if it's a glossy finish because the, the layers are quite thin for the varnish itself, it's not as, um, it's not like really highly reflective, it just has a protective coat. So I really recommend that. Anyway, that's basically it uh, for all the tips. I know it's kind of long, but I just really felt like talking a bit more about the acrylics. And if you want more tips and actual demos, you know, step by step with the paints, then tell me in the comment section. I'll try to make more tutorial. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you liked it, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it so everyone can see it. If yourself, you have some sort of acrylic paints tips, I would love to know both them below in the comment section and I'm sure you can help anyone who's reading the comments and it might also help me for my future paintings. So here is a close-up of the finished piece. So this is Hayuna and it's a pretty large painting as you can tell and I really love how the hair turned out with like this multi-dimensional bluish, purplish, greenish, you know, I love my colors and also on the face I've incorporated the blues and 
Here's the skin like on her chest and everything and the flowers. And yeah. So I'm really proud of this finished painting. Like I said, I haven't really worked with acrylics in a long time. So I'm really, really pleasantly surprised. And I definitely want to do more. So the original isn't available, of course. This was a present for a friend of mine. But you can get the prints on my Etsy store. The link will be in the description right below the video. And also in the eye corner. And if you'd like also to support my channel. I do have a lot of things available on my Patreon page every month. I collect all of my artworks sketches and color information I do a little step by step and I give that to my patrons for two dollars so head over to my patreon page link will also be somewhere in the screen and in the description right below and yeah that will be it thank you again so much for watching you guys and I'll see you next week bye bye